Um, today, uh, you know, is I wanted to give you some context of how our last 48 hours was about how we feel about the NCAA tournament not getting in and about uh, the NIT. Um, I'll answer a few questions at the end um, about those two subjects. And I hope you respect that. Any other, any other questions about any other topic, um, I'll answer later. But I just want to, didn't have to do this today, but I just, for Sooner Nations fans, people, I, I wanted them to have a little context instead of inferring some different things. Um, I'm here today not, not with some written, predetermined speech that someone handed me. Um, this is me speaking from the heart about, um, about our guys, the devastation, the, the hurt they're going through, um, and about just me from the heart about being the leader of this program, about our guys. Um, I'm going to take you through on these two topics. <clears throat> a year ago, roughly a year ago today, um, I was reminiscing with Los and Sam and Otega yesterday. Um, a year ago today, after guys went in the portal, who was left was Yaya Keda, Luke Norweather, Sam Godwin, Otega Owe, and Milo Suzan. That was our roster after the portal. And my incredible staff sat around. We were like, we are going to build an NCAA tournament team the right way with guys that represent Oklahoma. Starting from that, three post players and just two guards were freshmen returning. And we recruited a group of young men that I would go to battle with at any time. I, would, I enjoyed working every single day going with these guys and put ourselves in a position, you know, building that from this point forward. I look at from December 1st, every single day since December 1st, our young guys woke up right or wrong and would look at a bracket and Oklahoma was, Oklahoma was in a bracket. There wasn't a day from December 1st on. Now, if we lost a game, we might slide a seed. And as a coach, I know better to look at those things because I know there's a lot left. But for young people, every single day from December, they're looking at a bracket and they're in it. The first time since December 1st they looked up that they were not included was on the bracket reveal. And I'll say this, it's not who I am. I'm not here and you, to talk about any other team or any other conference. That's not who I am. I would never want to take the joy away from a young student athlete or a coach that's in it right now. It's not who I am. So you're not going to bait me into questions or get me to say anything bad about another team that, that is included or a conference that's included because I just don't want to take the joy away from them. <laughs> but I will talk about the complete hurt and how dumbfounded I am of why Oklahoma wasn't included. And I have not been told a reason. That day of, um, you know, I know there's a lot of talk of bracketologists, and I didn't know this. I guess there's like 120 of them. Didn't know that. But if you take like the top 20 reputable ones, there's not one that didn't have a sin. There's not one. Two years ago, we were the last team out. And I'll have to say personally, I didn't feel there was, there was a lot of split. There's a lot of reasons why. And, and as hard as it was being the last ones out two years ago, there's some, there's some compelling things that I could say that of what it was told me. And, and, I, and, um, and as, as hard as I was, I could see it. I feel totally different right now. I feel such hurt for the young guys who put so much into it that they don't have answers. That why, why they were left out when every single day, the response I'm getting from people um, in the media, other coaches, we had you in. I can't get an answer from anybody to tell me why. And I think that's where the flaw comes in of the process. And I'm not going to sit here and call out any things and I'm not going to go down a rabbit hole. I'm just going to say that the system is flawed because you hear different reasons of why a team got in. This team might got in for their net. This team got in because their strength of schedule. This team got in because they had this many quad one wins. 
This team got in because they didn't have as many bad losses. This team got in because their league, whatever it is, you hear different. There's no consistency of why a team got in. That's to me where like this metric, they, their, 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 K, their Ken Palm was better. Their BPI was better. There's no consistency. There's always a reason that is shown to fit and answer what they give you. If there's 20 people that are absolute experts in studying all the metrics, if they study every metric, and those top 20 people who do that and study it all have Oklahoma in, that's, that's, that's the concern for me about the system. Of then why, when you look at some teams that are in, our metrics are better than a lot of them. And that is what I have to give our guys answers and their families. Families that believed in what we're doing. And, and to go back to that story of where we were a year ago, we sat there two games below, we finished the game two games below 500 a year ago right now with those five guys staying. And from that point on, in the number one league in the country, by every analytic, we went plus 10. We went from two games below to 20 wins in eight games. That's a plus 10 turnaround. And for all intent and purposes, we're an NCAA tournament team. We had to overcome the craziest Saturday that I can remember of five bid stealers. And I'm so incredibly proud of, of our guys of fighting through what they did, the resiliency. You know, injuries are part of the game. I get it. But those are tough to handle. We were 18 and six ranked. We were seven and six in quad one and two when we had a couple guys go down and from that forward. But the resilience of a fighting through to get where we were and then to sit there on the bracket show when every indication was that we were in and we're not. <clears throat> so I'm proud of, of, of the year that went on. No one will look as a coach at what we could have done better. I, more than anybody, being as long as myself, I look at what could I have controlled? Where could we have found two more points in this game? Where could we have found two more points in that game? So that's what I start with internally. But then I think about the end result, where we were at. From that starting point in one year, my staff worked so incredibly hard in the era of the NIL when this is really the first year that we really had some. And that's the fact of the matter. And we made a huge jump. Um, but I go back to thinking about our guys and not getting in. And that's, I can't get an answer. I know you're going to ask me, what, what have you been heard? I can't, no one can tell me an answer. And that's where I think the, flaw, the flawed system is. Um, you know, some people will say they didn't want nine Big 12 teams in. Well, that's, that's not a good reason. Some people say, oh, the Big 12 game, the system. There's, there's, I can name almost 10 teams that had 13, 14, 16, 17 quad three and four games. We had 11. So you can't, you can't say that. There's a lot of things that um, I'm not going to go into so many details because people will, you know, always pick apart the, the metrics. But that was, uh, it's, it's, uh, there's not a specific gauge to go by while you're in or out to tell these teams. Is it strength of record? Is it net? Net really does the efficiency. Doesn't it count in your opponent? The, the strength of record goes into the quality opponent and all that. That's a telling one. Ours was 31, very high. Um, so that's, uh, and then I want to give you some context for our guys. Um, the resilience they showed, the families, the group of coaching staff that I had, I couldn't be more proud of who they are. But, but instead of inferring, I wanted to share with you and put you in, in our shoes in the room. So we sat there since December 1st, and the guys felt there was, there was never an indication Oklahoma wasn't in until the reveal. The raw emotion in that room was so real. These unbelievable young men, the tears, hugging each other, the disbelief, the anger, the range of emotions was raw trying to find the words to explain to them I had none. I couldn't, I, I, don't, I don't know why. 
the metrics, why we, were, we weren't included. And trying to find words in those 10 or 15 minutes, and then all of a sudden to having to say to them, do you want to play in the NIT? It never was a thought. And it's absolutely not to disparage the NIT. I think it's a storied tournament. It's not to say, Pippi will infer that some coaches wanted to go start on the portal. That's not where we were. We weren't about those, it wasn't even about those two teams. I will represent, I will coach to the last bounce I could possibly coach. And I told my guys that. I said, I will coach, I will develop, I will teach, I will compete for this school to the last bounce. So nobody can infer what it is. It was an incredible raw emotion that these kids had to make a decision in 15 minutes after heartbreaking news with some of the guys that will never have a chance to play in the NCAA tournament again. And that's the fact of the matter. I wish there's some teams that has 72 hours to kind of soak in that they weren't in, that can comprehend that they weren't in the tournament, and then they can make a decision to play in. There was none of that. It was hurt, pain, tears, emotion, and then, hey, but we, got, we got 20 minutes to make this decision. And that's the fact, is that we didn't feel we had enough guys to field a team, more than five guys or six guys, to field to, to, field to play in it. And that's, that's, that's the reality of it. And, um, and, and that's for people can infer. It was no other reason than that. But uh, completely um, on one hand, what these guys went through, the resiliency the last couple of weeks with some injuries to fight through in this league, um, to be where we were a year ago today. And I will say this too, we're at that same point. And I'm not, well, I'll talk later, but where we're going with this, you know, my parents, who were <clears throat> unbelievable people, <clears throat> were hurting for the players and their families more than any of us, the coaches. But my parents taught me, character is how you respond when things don't go your way. And how we're going to respond of getting gutted and devastated by this news is I remember feeling how bad we felt a year ago of being two games below 500 and all the work we put in. And I look at the year of absolutely everywhere we went, trying to get this fan base going, trying to get a roster in all this time to, to go plus 10. That there's going to be no, no less acceleration on our efforts for Oklahoma basketball. My staff, the players, where we're going, this was a devastating blow, but I know for all intents and purposes, from a year ago to now, where we were and what we did, for all intents and purposes, we were an NCAA tournament team. We had some crazy circumstances out of our control on a Saturday with five bid steals, with some injuries, and then, in my opinion, getting snubbed. But how we're going to respond is with work, with energy, enthusiasm, with class, that's why there's no way you're going to get me to, to talk about another conference, another team, a specific name, anybody. I don't want to take the joy from them because we will have our joy. We will have our joy. With that, we'll have a few brief questions or opportunity for some questions. Uh, please uh, start with one question at a time. We'll work our way through the room. Ryan, you want to start us off? Yeah, you talked about not getting a reason. Is there a process? in the wake on any year to get direct feedback from the committee, like why the decisions were made? Is, is that a formal process that happens at the end of the year? There's not a formal process on feedback. You get bits and pieces, and then you hear things. And that's, that's, the, that's I think, where the complaint of the coaches is, is there, there's, there's no transparency, and there's such general, generalities. And for every team, a why they got in and why they didn't get in is a different reason. You know. Over here, your, your net, your number of quad one opportunities. I've been told that. So what would you rather have? More quad one opportunities, which is harder, 
or 16 or 17 quad three or four games. Like to me, like that's, if it's, you can build your thing with 17, we only had 11 of those. Here's the other thing that I think is telling, and I've had so many coaches tell me this. We were undefeated against quad two, three, and four. We were undefeated. There's only five teams that did that. Purdue, number one seed. Houston, number one seed. Auburn, a number two seed. UConn, a number one seed. And Oklahoma. If it was so easy to do that, why are the only other teams to do that the best of the best? So that, that is, I've had a lot of coaches tell me that when that graphic came out. Because some people will say, oh, you didn't get in because you had a bad loss. You had this quad three loss, this quad four, I didn't get. Well, they use that some year or so some teams. Well, we didn't have that. Um, whatever it may be, that's where the problem I think the coaches have, is that there's just so many generalities and there's no specific process of, of, of unbiased getting in. And that's why I go back to, there's, if 20 experts who, who there, it's there, that's their, they sit there and they study and study and study all year long. When if you take the top 20 and nobody had Oklahoma excluded, that makes you scratch your head of why the first time someone says we weren't excluded was the bracket reveal. I'll go Bob and James. So after the bracket re is released, you fight through easy motion, What's your message to the team on Sunday night? You know, the, 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 it, was, it was very hard to talk to the team. They were, it, was, it was close to being inconsolable. Um, told them I loved them. I told them that sometimes in life we get things that are thrown at them that are unfair. The, it, it, what just happened is not going to be the last time in their life that something is unfair to them. I told them that. I thanked him. Um, I didn't have a lot of answers because I didn't, I didn't have them. All I could just say is the raw emotion as their head coach is I loved him. Some things in life were unfair. And uh, I'm proud of, of, of those guys believing in what they did in the hardest conference in the country through different adversities or hurt. And nobody can take away from them that from the starting point last year, I told Losis, the, the guys that were there from that, that group of guys to the point of where we competed and won to, to the extent we did and put ourselves in a position. And we had some things out of their control. Sometimes life, there's things out of control. I told them that. It was a crazy Saturday. It was an insane Saturday. Um, and that's what I told them. Porter, after listening to you, I understand why you didn't go to the NIT. Did you even get to the point of your three guys wanting to continue to play? Did, I mean, did you even get into any discussions like that at all when it came to the NIT? Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, and just it was, it was, it was just, it was too far from their mind. And that's why I do think in the future, I just, I get the NIT wants to piggyback off the selection show. I get that. It's been that way for years. But right now, there's if, you know, when it. it to, to, to have to shift, like I said, some people had time to decompress and kind of understand they weren't in. There's teams, and they, they get to, all right, for three or four days, you know, we're not getting in. It, the, that disappointment, and they, they process it, and they're like, all right, let's compete in the NIT. There, there's, there's no time to process when you absolutely were told by everybody you're in. And there was no time to process it. And the, the emotion of those guys, it, just, it, was, it was not about continuing to play. It was just pure hurt, and they couldn't think of anything else other than that. And uh, that was where, you know, you're not going to go in and compete with about five guys. And just that was, I, like I said, I told them, I will coach, teach, develop, compete, prepare, represent every one of those words for the University of Oklahoma and, and play. And I will do that. And, uh, but we, we, you know, the administration and us combined made a decision. It's, it's almost unfair for the five guys to do it if we, if we do it with a, a small number of guys. Go Ferry, then Jesse. Now, Porter, without the Pitt Steelers, I think you'd have been a nine seed, not even in Dayton. Right. Wouldn't even have to mess with the first four. I agree. If you'd had been a nine seed and not in Dayton, Brooklyn, or wherever, would you sit there and look at the bracket and say, hey, why are we so low? Um, why are, why'd they have us 
because I mean your your frustration with committees obvious and, and understandable. However, you're a nine seed wherever the, the bid stealers put you where you are today. So you're asking like would I have been happy with my seed? Right, yeah. I mean in other words, I mean in some ways it was out of the committee's hands. If they had you a nine seed in wherever Team A, B, C, and D, and E all won. They had no choice but to move you down. No, I, I get it with I get us moving us down with the bid stealers. I, I, I get that part of it. Um, I don't get where our metrics, I feel across the board, are higher than some other teams that got in. And I'm it's just and I'm not going to name specific teams. I don't want to take away joy from anybody. But I just fighting for our guys, fighting for the, this of how good the Big Twelve was. Um, and I'll say that moving forward, you can't put a limit on how many teams in a league is. That's just not a reason not to take a team. Um, but I get the bid stealers of where we were before the bid stealers. But after those bid stealers, there's still, I can't get an explanation why we weren't in. Because no matter who calls me, no matter what any expert says, they still had us in. And that's like, that, that's what everyone keeps, well, that's the only feedback I've gotten is like, I don't know what to say, Porter, we had you in. That's all I, that's after the bid stealers. So um, I get I get the, the bid stealers of moving us down off the, I get that. Um, I don't get why we still weren't included based on our metrics across the board. Jesse. Porter, with all that, with, with how disappointing the weekend was and the crazy turn of events, just how do you, I guess in a broad sense, how do you evaluate the season as a whole? Like you said, you, you improved a lot from last year and most years. You make the tournament after this season. But with all that, just how do you evaluate it? What do you take from it going into, going into Take a big, how big of a jump we made. Uh, the, 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 I thought we had, um, you know, we competed against the best and the best. Um, I will always start with where could we have been better. I'll always start with that. But these guys played hard every night. They competed. They showed resiliency. They they won 20 games and put themselves in a position of 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 being an NCAA tournament team. Um, the reality is we're not. Um, and I know that'll fuel me and the guys. Um, but again, I tried to give you some context of sitting up in that coach's office with my staff and say, all right, we got Yaya, Luke, Sam, and two freshmen, Losa and Otega. Let's, in this crazy world of NIL, we, let's, let's, we, gotta, we gotta build the guys that fit us. And I thought anybody who got to know our guys, the guys that represented Oklahoma, five-star human beings. I thought they played, they represented, um, we went and went plus 10 in a season in the number one conference in the country. Um, I'm hurting so much for the guys because I felt they felt competing against the best of the best to get in, to be, get the opportunity to advance and compete. That's what, I'm, that's what I take. I'm just, I'm, I hurt from the, for these guys. Colton and Nathan. Where you mentioned not only today, but throughout the season, how much you loved coaching this group. I'm just curious, what will you remember from, from this group specifically? And you mentioned last year, Yeah, uh, the resiliency of this group sticks out to me. Um, you know, guys like Latre Darthard and Rivaldo Soares, the absolute passion and urgency to make the tournament on an everyday basis. You just felt it. You felt it in the film session. You felt it. And then Rivaldo to turning it to where all of a sudden for like an eight-game stretch was playing at a all-conference clip and then in the Baylor game to go down with his ankle and he never really was right again. What we didn't talk about is when you took his sock off and it looked like a big snowball every single day. Even the games he fought back and played. I think back at the Cincinnati game of looking out on, the, on that court against a really, really good team who's fighting for their NCAA life with no point guard on the floor and Rivaldo almost limping to the bench and Latre just exhausted and, um, and to fight through and finding ways to win. Um, you know, to be going into the tournament, all of a sudden find out, you know, JVM couldn't play, that we find out that morning. That happened two different times. And the guy's belief of coming together, and that's what you want when you're building teams, is a togetherness. Um, there wasn't infighting, there wasn't jealousy, there wasn't a lot of outside factors with this group. It was about Oklahoma, uh, about being the best we could be to put ourselves in a position to be in the tournament in advance. And and that starting point, and then even in the recruiting process, recruiting those guys, you know, having them believe they're like, 
who, who's, who's coming back? And you're like, well, we got these two freshmen that played a lot. You know, we gave Sam a scholarship. We got a freshman that we redshirted. And for those guys to believe we could do it, you know, I'll remember that belief and the amount of my staff, um, the energy my staff had with these players. Um, and after I've, I've had to lose some guys, I've lost some guys to being a head coach. I lost a guy in, in August to go to Duke. I, you know, I've had some turnover there. And for my staff to come together and every single day fight for these guys, an incredible coaching staff. Um, I'll remember uh, just uh, that. And I'm just, I'm just heartbroken for the families and these kids to do so much of what was asked, to believe in it, and then not get a great answer. And to have, for months, they saw Oklahoma in. And the only time in months that, that someone even remotely said you weren't in was on the bracket reveal. That was very, very raw and, dis and devastating for these young guys. Thanks. Porter, you mentioned Luke Gray and Waldo, and you got Mox that's going out the door, too. Just what does it mean to, to have those three in your program for this one year and to develop those relationships with them? You know, I, th I think those guys, um, you know, had, you know, one of the things we, I, I mentioned this, you know, is you find reasons and themes to bind a team together. One of the things that bound our team was that no one was in the NCAA tournament before. And we were spinning that in a positive way to create this energy to get there. And uh, I referenced my Creighton teams. Um, the first time we went, nobody in the room had been there. Um, and that bound us together. And I referenced that. Um, and, uh, you know, those guys had an urgency about them that they brought every day um, that I'll remember that that comes with guys in this COVID year. You know, this, we have one more cycle of COVID years where guys transfer, they have one year left. You know, um, Sam Godwin will be in the, that for us. Sam Godwin will be in his COVID year. Um, but there's an urgency about that. Um, but um, those guys, they, they definitely brought an urgency every day. We'll wrap up today. Yeah, they're, they're, that, that'll be a question for another day. I just, uh, in terms of just, you know, where we're going from here. But, um, you know, um, we got competitors, and, uh, and my staff, myself, um, and uh, you, 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 um, faith, family, friends, togetherness, this awesome University of Oklahoma, the outpouring of, of people. Um, <clears throat> I'll say this, you know, my good friend that I've really developed a great friendship the last three years, and he's friend to everybody around here, um, Bob Stoops. <clears throat> he uses um, he uses the term OUDNA a lot. We've talked about it, and um, the OUDNA just doesn't talk about at the top of the hill. The OUDNA is really strong as you're climbing that hill. And that's where the staff, these players, this program is going to rely on that ODNA to fight through this adversity. The people at this school, the outpouring of people, the leadership, and the two Joes, Joe Harris and Joe Castiglione, um, Marcus Bowman, my, my um, administrator. Um, but that ODNA never has to be more relevant. It's, it's almost more important on the way up than it is at the top. And that's where um, we're going to lean on as we move forward. Thank you.